Welcome to IdeaGen TV. Today we are live at the NASDAQ for the 17 days of sustainability. We have an incredible power panel, including Esteban Olivares from Summer Discovery. Esteban, welcome. Thank you, George. Honored to be here. So great to have you here, Esteban. And Gretchen O'Hara from Microsoft, leading the way. Gretchen, welcome. Thank you, George. So excited to be here. So excited to have you here as well. And Daniel Kearns, IdeaGen Global Fellow. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you, George. Uh, excited to talk to you today. Excellent. And Dan Kearns, former headmaster of the Georgetown Visitation Preparatory School. Dan, welcome. George, thank you very much. It's indeed a pleasure to be with you. What a pleasure. The pleasure is mine, and it's inspiring because today we're going to hear some incredible thoughts about the global goals of the United Nations. Back uh, several years ago now, in 2015, the United Nations came together and unanimously, I'll say that again, unanimously agreed to these 17 global goals. All 193 member states of the UN agreed that these 17 goals were critically important to achieve by 2030. And this panel today is going to be specifically talking about education. And I'd like to begin with Esteban. Esteban, tell us a little bit about your role at Summer Discovery and the incredible work that you're doing with educating students from across the planet on these 17 global goals? Well, at Summer Discovery and Summer Institute for the Gifted, which we call SIG, um, I'm head of academics and uh, new university partnerships. Um, but I'm part of a larger team. We, we do some life-changing um, programs for students across the world. We work with um, universities like Wharton, Cambridge, UCLA, University of Pennsylvania, University of Michigan, and amazing organizations like IdeaGen. Um, Specifically with IdeaGen, we have the Future Global Leaders class, which dives into the 17 um, SDGs and, you know, using a 21st century learning model, um, students learn about the SDGs, they, they solve problems, um, project-based learning, they, they come up with a solution, and, um, you know, it's those type of experiences um, where students learn to be leaders. They learn to be the architects to, you know, develop the framework to, to make the, the SDGs realized in 2030. You know, and, and that's the thing. As we look at 2020, we looked at that runway to 2020 leading into 2030. And here we are a few years later, and the issues are more stark. The inequalities and in the, in the access to education is transformed tremendously. The innovation is accelerated. And so, Gretchen, You've collaborated with Summer Discovery. You've done such incredible work, AI, cloud, innovation. You're leading the way, helping to connect the dots through digital innovation across the planet with Microsoft. Can you share the importance of the work that you're doing with Summer Discovery in terms of helping to educate students on these global goals? Thanks, George. I think that, first of all, uh, it's an incredible program, and I, I feel so honored to be a part of that because I'm learning every day from the students that I get a chance to, to connect with. And, you know, the opportunity to really provide leadership, project-based learning, applied innovation, and the, um, uh, the focus on United Nations um, Sustainable Development Goals really provides that framework and construct to give these future leaders an opportunity to bring all of this together and make change. And so I think one of the most exciting things in this program for me, and I've been able to, to, to really realize and recognize as I've, I've worked with the students, is um, they're going very deep. They are connecting with each other and, and across the globe. They are understanding issues that are very complex that we are all trying to understand as well. And they're tackling them by breaking those down into milestones and approaches that are very achievable. It's a very exciting approach. And I think getting to our youth and empowering this really, really creates a, an incredible future. Yeah, and what I've seen, and I agree with you wholeheartedly, uh, when you look at youth, you're looking at the future. And I think that's the power of changing the world, is looking at youth and helping to educate these youth across the planet to have access. And as they say, if you can see it, you can be it, and all the rest. This is what we're talking about, is that one individual can truly change the world. You can change the world. There are many examples of that. And... 
We have with us today as well, Dan Kearns, the former head of school at Georgetown Visitation Preparatory School. Dan, you've educated over the course of your career thousands of young women, thousands of young women that have gone out to be leaders, to lead in their communities, to lead in their companies, to lead in the public sector. Why is this so important? What is it about purposeful teaching that can help change the world? Well, George, I think you said it. Um, the young people of our, our communities are the future. They are the, the, those who will uh, make change and do great things. And I think that uh, at Visitation, where I was for 30 plus years, I was privileged to be part of a program that was uniquely designed for young women to achieve their highest potential and maximize their potential and goals. Uh, this happens not only in the classroom and the labs, but in sports fields, uh, in leadership opportunities, and we encourage all of our young uh, women to see themselves as leaders and to take every opportunity that they have to maximize that. At the same time, we also, and I think this is very important, we want the young women in our uh, program to understand and to see themselves as women of service and to really uh, do everything they can to become uh, service oriented and do what they can to solve the uh, problems of their community but also of the broader world and I think that we have been successful in doing that. I think one of the things that uh, as a head of school I would always enjoy is the first semester back to have young women come to us after their first semester in college and tell us how involved they are but how well prepared they are to meet the challenges that they, uh, that they have encountered in just a short period of time. And, and so, perfect segue to Daniel Kearns. Daniel, you're an IdeaGen Global Fellow, and you've seen and assisted in so many different elements of IdeaGen, and so you see the youth perspective. You're a youth yourself, and we'd love to hear your perspective on what it is that you're seeing. Why is this so important, your role? as an IdeaGen Global Fellow. Yeah, thank you again for the opportunity to talk, George. Um, I believe the role, my role as an IdeaGen Ambassador, just to spread the awareness of the global goals um, and the mission of IdeaGen. Uh, I think it's, we see young people, we see on the news and the internet, the problems and the injustices highlighted in the global goals. And with these long-term goals, I think youth will be a catalyst to not only achieve them, but sustain them for themselves and future generations. And I believe my role as an ambassador for IdeaGen is to bridge the gap between those who have the desire to complete the goals in the future and those that are already putting in the hard work to do that now. Well, it sounds to me like you're connecting the dots. You're connecting the dots that we talk about so much and you're talking about proximity as well, because you're right there in the community and you're helping to change the world. And that's the idea. We talked earlier about Mandela, Malala, Louis Stokes. All of these folks had one thing in common. They're giants because they, they were the spark that led to systemic change. And that is what, Dan, you just described. And that's inspiring to us all here today at the NASDAQ Live to be talking about what youth can do and what your perspective is, which I, I believe is so critically important. And so back to Gretchen. Gretchen, what I love about this panel today is the cross-sector nature of it. You're at Microsoft, there's Summer Discovery, Dan's at UPenn, Dan, you've educated thousands of young women. There's an element of this cross-sector that comes together with technology. And so Gretchen, each summer, you know, we've partnered with Summer Discovery. It's been profound to see the future. We're able to see around corners. Why? Because you're having conversations with some of the most innovative youth on the planet during these conversations. And so bringing SDG education to the fore with these students and leaning into these goals to learn more and help address some of the most vexing issues in the world through a hackathon, you've interviewed these winners. You've seen them, you've talked to them, You've been inspired by them, I know, for several years now with IdeaGen and Summer Discovery. Gretchen, what is your biggest takeaway from this experience? 
There's a lot, and I, I'm actually still inspired, Daniel, by by your point that you actually met to, met as well, which is around sort of you know bridging bridging that gap. And I think two takeaways for me actually. Um, the first is the awareness, and I think that um, we all are seeing uh, some of the biggest issues, challenges um, that are front and center. Are certainly. Uh, probably more profound now in, in the last you know 18 months than we've seen for a while. And so just the general awareness, I think, is a really important one that every student and, and the hacks walked away with a deeper understanding um, of what the issues are and, and, and how we can solve them. So number one, I think, and, and talking to them, that was very enlightening to them as well. But the second one for me that was my big takeaway is the interdisciplinary um, approach that they took to the hack. And you sort of bring this up in the, in the panel here today. You had someone deep on the innovation technology. You had somebody that was focused, you know, might be um, on the sciences side. You had somebody focused um, on policy. Uh, you, you had a really good collection of, of the interdisciplinary approach of what it's going to take to solve these problems. And I thought that was fascinating. And every one of the students who won on the hacks was working specifically on one goal, but impacted many of the 17 goals. And it's, I think, the opportunity that shows that when you address one, that you have the ripple effect and the opportunity to really impact many. And they got that in their, in their, in their projects. They uh, articulated that so well. Uh, in the discussions and their learnings. And I think we all have the opportunity to realize that where we put our focus, it has a massive impact around all 17 in some way or another. Well, Gretchen, I think what you said is so profound simply because all of these goals, you highlight the fact that all of these goals are so incredibly interconnected. They're so incredibly interconnected and the thought and the ability to bring those goals to bear to achieve them by 2030 is so critical, ultimately, with global partnerships. Goal number 17 is global partnerships. Why did they make that number 17? It's the last goal, and it's the goal that ties everything back together. And that's what we're talking about here today, the importance of partnerships, but not only partnerships, partnerships for the goals across sectors. Anga just completed here in New York City. And we've all heard the conversations that took place. Education has been highlighted. The importance of education has been highlighted. And what I personally and professionally like about the global goals is that whether you're sitting in your home in Washington, DC, or you're sitting at your home in Namibia, or you're sitting at your home in somewhere in India, the goals are equally important to you. And by the way, you can also make an impact no matter where you are on the planet. And so this is critical. And we lead back to Esteban. Esteban, you're dealing directly with these students, right, literally across the planet. You have line of sight, and what I like to say is that ability to peer around corners, which is unique to the four of you sitting here on this panel today. You're peering around corners, and you're looking at your work at Summer Discovery leading into 2030. What are you seeing? Well, definitely developing programs where students have a career focus. They explore that career medicine, engineering, coding, technology, um, entrepreneurship. But it's not just enough to have that knowledge set around those careers, it's the skills needed, collaboration, creativity, innovation, to bring that knowledge set to making change in the world. But just like medicine and engineering and tech, how does everyone work together to make a difference? And so how do you use that skill set on top of that knowledge to Think about what is my place as a doctor? What is my place in technology? What is my place as an entrepreneur? And responsibility as a global citizen to, to make change. And so that's the other skill set is bringing all of that together, using technology to create change, collaborating, working in teams, and creating a new future. Profound, uh, you know, that, that leaves us, I'm not always uh, at a loss for words, but when you think about it, it's also profound to be with you all here today talking about innovation with a company that's helping to lead the way like Microsoft and with folks that have been on the ground educating young women, young students, and individuals that are leading in education. Um, Dan, former headmaster, Georgetown Visitation Preparatory School, 
how can the curriculum evolve from where it was to meet the challenges that we're facing leading into 2030? George, I think that's an interesting question. Uh, some things need to change and evolve in terms of focus and methodology, but some things need to be in reinforced. And I think it's important that we, we consider both. In terms of methodology, I think that the experience that we've had in the last year and a half with a, a significantly greater impact of virtual learning, remote learning has been very, very important. Schools that had not really been at the forefront of that now had to become much more facile in terms of the uh, instructional models that they had. And that's been important to create uh, the broader communities and greater resources um, that would be now available to them. Um, I think that we, the focus needs to change, and I think this resonates very uh, well with IdeaGen's commitment to the global goals. We need our students to think beyond their local communities. We need them to be aware, and we need to, them to understand not only the opportunities, but the challenges that exist in a global community, and to think way beyond their local, uh, their local school and their local communities. Uh, at the same time, I think we need a focus on empathy and compassion. Um, there are significant problems in the world, uh, as, as in my case, uh, with the young women I've taught, they have great opportunities to make a difference, and we really need them to understand uh, this empathy and the need for compassion, but we also have to equip them for the tools, with the tools, uh, that they can make a difference. At the same time, there are things that need to be reinforced. Um, every school, secondary and post-secondary, should have a goal of creating uh, think, uh, critical readers, uh, clear thinkers, and those who can analyze complex problems. This happens not only in the sciences, but it happens in, in the humanities as well. And that's an area where I think education needs to continue to hold to the, perhaps that more traditional model, but really see that um, having young people be critical thinkers, clear th uh, speakers, and people who can analyze problems is, is critical to you know, success. You know, that's a, another perfect segue and for Daniel, uh, the challenges. What, Daniel, would you say are the biggest, what is the biggest challenge face, facing youth today? And how can IdeaGen leaders, the leaders involved in IdeaGen, help to address those issues? Yeah, well, I think surrounding the global goals, the biggest challenge is just the communication and connections necessary to bring those who want to achieve the goals together with other people who do as well. And I think youth today are more connected than they've ever been through the internet and their phones, but sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming trying to decipher what information is of real value to you and what you can really use. Um, and I, I want to reiterate the the belief that I have that the young generation wants to achieve these goals. They have a real desire to. And I've seen firsthand at IdeaGen those who are working now, the individuals in the groups working now doing extraordinary things to achieve them. And I think at IdeaGen there's a great group of individuals who are motivated and dedicated to achieving these goals and they have the unique responsibility, I'll say, to not only inform people who want to know about the global goals, what they can do, but inspire those to create the change as well. Daniel Kearns, the last word today on this incredible, inspiring Change the World Power Panel here live at the NASDAQ, Esteban Olivares, Summer Discovery, Gretchen O'Hara, Microsoft, Daniel Kearns, IdeaGen Global Fellow, and Dan Kearns, former headmaster of Georgetown Visitation Preparatory School. Thank you all so very much.